I want to take an example now from Moses when God called him to go back and be the deliverer of Israel out of Egypt. You remember he, God appeared to him in the burning bush. And then God said to him in Exodus chapter 4, now I'm sending you back to deliver Israel. And Moses had lost all his self-confidence which he had at the age of 40. At the age of 80 he had no confidence in himself. He said, why me Lord? I can't do it. I've got nothing. What can I do it with? And the Lord said to him, as he always is so practical, what have you got in your hand? And Moses looked down and said, well it's a rod, just like every shepherd in the Middle East carries. He didn't think there was anything particularly important about his rod. But the Lord said, throw it on the ground. And when he did, it became a snake. And Moses ran from his own rod. In other words, there was a potential in that rod he had in his hand which he had never anticipated or imagined. Then the Lord said, pick it up by the tail. And everybody who deals with snakes knows you never pick a snake up by the tail. But Moses did. I think he was trembling as he did it. And it became a rod in his hand. And God said to him, in effect, now go with your rod, that's all you'll need. You can do the whole job with that one rod. And if you analyze the rest of that part of the book of Exodus, the entire deliverance of Israel out of Egypt was achieved by that rod. Every time Moses wanted God to intervene, he stretched out his rod and God intervened. And the result was in a sense that Moses wrested the rulership of Egypt out of Pharaoh and had it in his hand, in his rod. And the last scene was the passing through the waters of the Red Sea. When the waters needed to be divided, Moses stretched out his rod, the waters were divided. When the Egyptians were in the water pursuing them, Moses stretched out his rod, the waters returned and destroyed the Egyptians. So the only instrument he needed for the entire task that which God had called him to was that one shepherd's rod, which he didn't think had any significance when he first held it in his hand. Now what I want to suggest to you, if you're a Bible-believing, committed Christian, you have a rod. You know what it is? It's your Bible. If you've got a Bible here, I'd like you to hold it up. And I'd like you to say, this is my rod. Will you say that? My, my Bible is my rod. My Bible is my rod. With it I can do everything God tells me to do. With it I can do everything God tells me to do. All right, you may put your Bible down.